As a bloke, you don't want to arrive early in the bedroom, hotel room, kitchen bench, spa bath, car, or wherever you are. But you do want to feel comfortable talking about a solution. Pilot.com.au, your online men's health navigator. It could be one of the great days in Olympic history for Australia, or we could get our hearts ripped out by the end of it. Either way, I'm all in, and from the feel of things, you are too. Our daily flip as we bring our Olympics and footy coverage together with Kane Corns. Kane, welcome. They're all in, Jared. I'm getting that as well. I mean, I've, I've delved into areas I shouldn't have. I mean, I've been really disciplined for a week and a half. I, there was strict instructions, your footy, other sports. <laughs> Jared's got the Olympics, but I couldn't help it today. So I, I had to get Cam Luke on and preview uh, this epic encounter that's in front of us What in, a, in just over an hour's time. And it did take me back to 1996 where Shane Hill got it right up in the face of Charles Barkley in Atlanta. And I, I mentioned it was one of my favorite sporting moments as a kid. I hope there's a bit of niggle and a bit of aggro, and I hope our guys don't back down today. So, Kane, do you believe in miracles? Yeah, I think they can win. I, I, I do. I, I mean, a lot's going to ride on it. they got the best player on the planet, uh, and that's Kevin Durant. Now, international basketball is a bit different. If it was under the NBA rules and, and the three-point line and the other things that are in place in that league, then you'd probably give them no chance. But this international tournament does suit the boomers, and there's something about a team taking on a what appears to be a group of individuals from what I've seen. Uh, they've just sort of band-aided this US team together of who was willing to put their hand up and play, where our Aussies want to be there and they want to win gold. And if they can win a medal, let's not even focus on gold. If they get over this one and win a medal, it's one of the greatest accomplishments that, that we've ever seen in Australian sporting history. So this is one of the biggest games that Australia's ever played in. Any sport. Mm-hmm. Any sport, I think. For the lineage, for the the generations of heartbreak that Australian men's basketball has lived through against the all-powerful, the all-powerful Team USA, and for the strive in it through the years, um, there's just no underplaying 215, I don't think. No, I don't think so. And and, uh, so I alluded to uh, the legend that was born of Shane Hill. When you think about that, and we're still talking about it some 25 years later, imagine for Paddy Mills. I mean, so that was just Shane Hill because he he chest-pumped Charles Barkley, and we love the attitude and we love the way that he represented his country. What about what Paddy Mills has done in the last two weeks and beyond and all moments leading to this event? Should he lead this team over the line today? The legend of Paddy Mills already, flag bearer and one of the most talked about athletes for these games. The humble nature of him, the selfless attitude behind it. He's just changed NBA teams. No one's talking about that. Everyone's talking about him leading us to an unlikely medal. So I just think... Legends are born on, on stages like this, and, and that's what's in store for potentially us today. That's It's why it's so accessible, I think, for us. It's why our, our hearts are on the line. Hey, it has, it's been a great day. A little reflection on last night. Mm. When did, with Peter Bowl, how far out were you cheering him and urging him at the telly? Oh, well, I was I was really flat that the pace wasn't on. Yep. So he's had this unbelievable ability just to tuck in in second, and that, that's where he's that's where he's lived, and that's where he's felt most comfortable. And you knew they were going to come, and the pressure was going to come from behind in that last one eighty sort of meters. And would he have the speed to go with them? So I was. I was glad he just took it on. I mean, he gave himself every opportunity. And, I mean, that's all you can ask. Like, he's put himself into the lead in the last 200 metres of an 800-metre final at the Olympics, given it everything and finished finished fourth. Like, it's it's a phenomenal achievement. I, and I just don't think that um, we even understand what an achievement this is. I mean, because there's... I mean, we we look at the success in the pool and I think at times we fall into the habit of comparing the success in the pool to the track and field and clearly there's not the equal success because there's a smaller pool. I mean, the African nations don't grow up with swimming pools, you know, have access to indoor swimming pools and they can't train like that, whereas they all can run and the strength of the African nations in running, we've all seen that. So for an Aussie to put himself in the lead for the last 200 and 800 metre final is just a phenomenal effort and finish fourth by giving it everything. And and then the flip side, the heartbreak with Jen Gregson um, was just, it's just, where, where's Jen gone? Where, where is she? And then they, you know, Bruce couldn't find her and had to remind us all if we didn't already know that he was broadcasting off a TV screen. Then we had the slow-mo and it wasn't an ankle injury. She's in the wheelchair. And then she snapped an Achilles. I mean, a lifetime's work into that moment. And at the last water jump, you snap your Achilles. So 
wasn't at all on display. The heartbreak of sport last night, it was fascinating. It, it takes us everywhere, the Olympics. Jen joined me this morning, Kane. So mm, I saw. obviously Ryan uh, is part of our broadcast team and Jen joined our, our call. As, so we played before just the raw emotion and how she found uh, her Achilles isn't painful, but the pain is really in the emotions. This was how she thought of when she was in the wheelchair. Yeah, I would say that was the hardest few minutes of my life was, yeah, hopping into a wheelchair and being wheeled off the track because, yeah, it, it, it's exactly how you would imagine. It's it's such a build-up. It's years of preparation. Um, for me, being my third Olympics, you know, I think of the first one in 2012. There's just so much that goes into being here and, yeah, for Ryan, there's been that many phone calls back and forth daily, just checking up whether I'm limping today or I'm walking or I'm running or I'm pain-free or in agony. There's just like the emotion, the emotional side that goes into getting to the Olympics is by far, um, you know, the hardest part. So we've had a pretty intimate view through the the swimming and the ats, Kane. So Rob Woodhouse, who's the uncle of Emma McKeon, and I did share with Emma a little earlier on, is once Rob had given his summary of her gold medal win in the 100, he just broke down and was it was mm. he was sobbing. It was just how much it meant to a, a great swimming family. And then Jen's raw emotions the morning after, a final on her birthday and ripping an Achilles. So, yes, these have been heightened games, I think, and maybe in those two examples uh, we've tapped... We've, we've been taken right to the core of it. Almost felt intrusive, but that's how close we've been. And it's been extraordinary coverage. Uh, um, you don't need my pats on your back, but I, I, as I said, I've, I've had a bit of uh, a bit of jealousy at times, and, and you know, we, we've had the, the footy stuff that's been bubbling away as well, and I think we've done a good job of covering that, but just the coverage of, of the station and the work that... Uh, Ross and Mitch behind the scenes have done to give access to these guests. Uh, I hope the audience have appreciated it. It, feel, it felt like to me that uh, we weren't talking about the Olympics enough in the lead up to it. It was like, is it going to go ahead? That that was the discussion. Is it the right thing? Once it started, how quickly everyone got wrapped up in it. I mean, maybe it's with age, but I can't remember an Olympics like it. Look, the ratings reflect that on Channel 7. It's certainly uh, the coverage on our station as well. So credit to everyone who's got involved. And there's still a bit to go. I, oh, I'm yeah. sort of, all my, all my eyes are on this afternoon, but then also to, to the events that I just love and I love everything about the marathon. So for me, 7.30 yes. Saturday morning for the women and Sunday morning for the men, it's just going to be, it's because of the heat, like the, 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 the challenge that the heat will possess to run for 42 Ks. For the, for the women, they're going to be running at about 3 minutes and 26 seconds per K, the Aussies. That, that'll be around there. Like, think about that in 30-degree heat. So the challenges that that will possess is, is what I'm looking forward to as well. So anyway, a lot to play out. Skateboarding in 20 minutes. <laughs> Two men in the final. It's been so much fun. Anyway, I digress. Hey, tell me about footy on this Thursday. Yeah, it's been a it's been a challenge. Like in your in your broadcasting career, I, I guess there's certain little um, when you're not you know as experienced as someone like you and seeing things like this. How do you um, give an opinion, which is the job that you've got to do about something in relation to what's happened with Taylor Walker and the Adelaide Football Club? That's it's been to, to find that balance. You've got to use a lot of alleged and a lot of if that's the case. It's been it's been hard this morning. I, I think we sort of. Um, had a couple of views, so you would be familiar with Stephen Rowe in Adelaide. Yeah. This was at this was at Fever Pitch, Jared. Yesterday, I've, I haven't heard coverage of an issue like this and passion come through on a radio station. Yes, he's, he's not our station, but Five to Play. I thought it was just well worth playing. And then the response from Sam McClure and Caroline Wilson. There's a whole lot of emotion in here. We we crossed to the Adelaide Oval this morning with Tom Wren, who informed us that Taylor Walker isn't present at training, which is well you question whether he's going to play. I mean, it's the main training session before a showdown on Saturday and your key goal kick is not there with all the, the things in front of him right now. So there's just so many unanswered questions and I must admit it's been a been a bit of a challenge on, on which way you cover this. So the Adelaide dynamic, so it, it's got to be determined by the AFL Integrity Department as to what happens. But the fact that this is the most striking aspect of it yesterday, the fact that it was so offensive to players and officials within the Adelaide setup that it would be referred to the league. That gives you the clearest hint on the severity of it and what mm. the ramifications might be within a footy club. So it's the AFL's remit, 
to determine what transpired. And then I suspect it's Adelaide's responsibility with its employees to either find um, a suitable settlement or to issue a suitable punishment. Mm. And uh, and that's, in a way, it, it shows how far we have come because I, I can imagine this being dealt with internally in the past. As, as wrong as that is uh, for the club to deal with it in their, their own way, the fact that they have escalated it is absolutely the right thing and a sign of how far we've come, yet a sign that if... This has been said once again how far behind we are. And just the significance of the showdown as well. And I, I sort of went back to 2016 with the banana on the field with Eddie Betts. And he's spoken about that as the lowest moment in his career. Both clubs came together, Jared, after that. So the Indigenous players and the leaders, the coaches, Ken Hinckley and Don Pike and the CEOs, to really take a stand. And Taylor Walker was central to that because he was captain of the Crows at the time with Travis Boak, who was a skipper of Port Adelaide, and just saying, this is where we are united here. Um, so, I mean, that was 2017, yeah. and we're still talking about this. So I just don't know where to if this alleged comment has actually been made. Yep, it is. It's inflammatory, that's for sure. Kane, let's finish with a couple of tips. Ready? Boomers, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Matildas, <laughs> yes or no? Yes. Yes. No. Kookaburras, yes or no? Oh, Kookaburras, absolutely. absolutely. 17 years, isn't it? They're home. Two out of three ain't bad. We have to probably oh. barter with the footy gods a bit. I hope it's a sweep. It, it's, it shapes as one of the great days in Olympic history for Australia. Can't wait for it, Jared. Uh, we'll speak to you soon. Flip off, you. <laughs> Flip off, Kane. Very nice. So the footy coverage on Flip, the Olympics coverage here. Paddlers for gold. The women and the men in the kayak finals. Two men in the skateboarding final. And then we will set you up. For 2.15, tip off Chris Anstey in the studio for the Boomers versus Team USA.